Hey, so I wanted to show you how to create a silhouette in camera and then also how to create one in Photoshop. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? So the simplest way in camera is to put the light source behind your subject. And as long as the light source is behind your subject, your subject is going to be backlit. The way to create the silhouette is instead of metering off your subject like you normally would, you want to twist your camera to point it at the, the bright light source and meter off of that. So here we'd be metering off of the sky area. And then when we take the shot, it's going to automatically silhouette the subject because our sensors just can't handle that kind of dynamic range. And once you've taken the photograph and you want to optimize it for a really clean and crisp silhouette, that's where we can just tweak it in Photoshop with one click. Open up my info panel and you can find that by going to window and just clicking on info. I'm going to default put it here, but I like mine right here because I like it to be a, just a nice fly out for me. So if I click on this info panel and I hover over this area, you see what we're getting? Uh, 55 in the red channel, 25 in the green channel, and 17 in the blue channel. So it should be 0, 0, 0, right? Now, remember, I do want this to be a, a black and white silhouette. So let me go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer just to show you. If I hover over it again, the left side is still going to show me the same per color channel values. But what you're seeing on the right side is how that black and white adjustment layer is basically equalizing all the color channels. But still, 34 in each of the color channels is not pure black. Pure black is zero. Here's the one click fix to make your silhouettes very crisp. Just add a levels or a curves adjustment layer. Either one is going to give you access to this black point eyedropper. And essentially, you're going to click on the tone that you want to shift to black. And I would say somewhere anywhere in this this body area, I'm going to click and see how that instantly shifted it to black. Now, look at my RGB values. They're zero, zero, zero now. The right side always shows you what you have right now. Now, for me, I like a lot of things about this image, the leading diagonal lines, the, the contrast of man against nature. There's a lot of good stuff happening. But for me, this sun is not in the right place, aesthetically speaking. Now, if I were Ansel Adams and I could stage the shoot the next day, if I'd gotten here too late in the day to get it today, which he did, he'd go back to the same location day after day until the clouds or the sun or the whatever was exactly where he needed it to be. But in Photoshop, I'm just going to hit Command or Control J so I'm not working on the background layer. I'll come over to the spot healing brush area right here and I toggle open the disclosure triangle and see all my other tools hidden and that content aware move tool is going to be perfect for this. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to click and draw a loose line all the way around it, which will convert to a selection. Then I can click and drag that sun wherever I want it. I think it would look better somewhere up here. And then I'm going to get this free transform box, which I don't need. I don't need to make it bigger or smaller. But watch what happens when I click enter. Photoshop clone stamps out the original and blends in the new spot. So when I hit command or control D to deselect, which is the same as going up to select and clicking deselect. Well, now I've moved the sun nicely to where I think it looks better in the composition. And what happens if you have an image that you want to be a silhouette that you've got to, that you didn't think ahead of time that you wanted a silhouette? Because we could do the same thing here if we could. I mean, this is a studio situation. So basically, you just wouldn't put any lights on the subject in the front. You put all the lights on the background or pointing toward the back of the subject. But we can still do this. So again, I just make sure that my quick selection tool is selected, which is going to give me access to the select subject button right up here in the toolbar. I'll click it and Photoshop's going to figure out what the subject is and it's going to do a decent job. So I choose select and mask just to quickly come in with this refine edge brush, which is found right here. It's typically automatically selected and I just pass over the hair anywhere. I, I thought that Photoshop didn't do a great job. And when I pass over this blue in between his hand and the body, Photoshop's going to figure out, oh, there's a lot of blue that's not selected. So let me deselect that. Let me deselect here. And once I've made my pass and I have the selection pretty much where I want it, I'll toggle on the smart radius, pull this up a bit, and I'll smooth by one pixel and I'll feather by 0.2 pixels. And for my output settings, I'll say output to a new layer with layer mask and click OK, which takes me right back to Photoshop. And notice what it did. Duplicated the couple and has applied a layer mask above the original background layer. Now, I like to separate my foreground for my background for this technique. Here's why. Now I can add a new layer by clicking on this create new layer icon right beside the trash can. It creates a transparent layer. Transparency is always indicated by this white and gray checkerboard in either the layers panel or in the image itself. And then I'll hit shift delete, which will bring up the fill dialog box. You can also access this by coming up to edit 
and down to fill. There's another command, shift F5 if you're on Windows. But once the fill dialog box is open, just choose black, click OK. Now here's the magic. You just hover between the two layers. See my cursor over here? Hold down the Alt or Option key and it automatically changes to the clipping mask icon. So if I click here, it's going to clip whatever this layer is to the layer below it. So I've very quickly created a silhouette. Now what I want to do is I want to toggle back on my background layer and Remember, ultimately, I want this to be a black and white silhouette. So I will go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer all the way at the very top of everything. Now, looking at this, I think me personally, I would rather have had this spotlight more behind the top of the couple, because remember, our eyes are going to go to the most focused part of an image or to the brightest part. So basically, I'm my eye is drawn to this high area of contrast and light area down here, and I want my viewer to be viewing up here. So the way to fix that, so I'll click on my background layer and I'll add another blank layer by clicking on create new layer icon. And again, it's going to be transparent. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit D for default to go back to my default uh, foreground background colors. I'll hit X to swap them. So now white is in my foreground. I make sure that I'm on the brush tool by looking right here and I'll come up and look at my opacity and I'm at 100%, which is perfect. So again, I can either hit this drop down disclosure triangle and drag the size to increase my brush, but I don't know how big I want it. So I have to come over. Nope. That's not big enough. Nope, that's not big enough. So a better way is just to tap the right bracket key and that will make your brush incrementally larger. See how large I'm making in proportion to the subject? So now I can just do a one click and I'm painting with white on that transparent layer. I'll come over here. So I'm essentially creating my own kind of spotlight and click again. And yeah, I, I like that. That's much more dramatic than what we had before, which was this. So that's a very easy way to create a fairly dramatic, high energy silhouetted image of something that you didn't even intend to be a silhouette. Let's look at a third image. I'm going to use the exact same techniques. I'm going to come over to the quick selection tool. Just as long as any tool in this area is selected, it's going to give me the select subject button at the top. I'm going to click select subject. It's going to automatically figure out what it thinks the subject is. It's doing a great job. And since I'm on the quick selection tool, I'll just get and add this tree because I want to silhouette that as well. Once I have all the subject primarily selected, I'll go into select and mask just to refine it with the refine edge brush, which is found here just by painting along the edge. Once I have the selection about where I want it, I'll always toggle on the smart radius just to give Photoshop one more chance to kind of look around the perimeter of my selection and basically you just drag it up to one to three pixels. I'll smooth this just by one pixel and feather it by 0.2 to 0.6, something like that. I could de decontaminate colors, but obviously there's no point here since I intend to silhouette the subject. So that doesn't matter. And then I'll output to new layer with layer mask. And when I click OK, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to turn off the layer I was on. It's going to duplicate the selected subject and apply a mask automatically. So what was that technique again? Just add a new layer by clicking on this icon. It's transparent. I'm going to hit shift delete or again, you can go all the way up to edit and fill. Either way is going to open up the fill dialog box. I'm going to fill it with black and I'm going to click OK. And here's the magic part. You hover between the two layers, hold the Alt or Option key to get this icon. See that change? And click in between them. I've automatically created a crisp silhouette. Now, if I need to tweak this mask, here's how we would do that. I'll Alt or Option click on the mask, Command space bar and click and drag just to go to a temporary magnification tool. I'll hold just the space bar to get just the hand tool. And here's another advanced tip. If I hit B for the brush tool and I go up to a blend mode of overlay, if I paint with white in my foreground, whatever is mid gray or less, mid gray or lighter, will be pushed to white. And that's kind of what I want to happen here. I need to make my brush a lot smaller. So I'm just holding down the left bracket key, pretty large. And then I can just kind of clean all that up for a crisper, silhouette command minus to shrink this a little bit so i'm just passing along the edge wherever i just want it to be a little more crisp and i can paint with black to make the black crisp see how that makes it really crisp command zero to fit it in the screen and let's click on the eyeball to bring it back to life so now i have a silhouette i'll toggle on the background layer and remember i want this to be a black and white silhouette so i'll make sure i'm on the very top layer whatever's there and I'll add a black and white adjustment layer. So it's now black and white. Now, because we've separated the background from the subjects, I can very easily click on the background, add a levels adjustment layer, and basically just brighten it up by dragging up the midtone slider until I get it to where I want. And then if I decide, you know, that spotlight effect was pretty nice on the couple, why wouldn't I do it here? So do it here, create a new blank layer. 
B for the brush. Make sure white's in your foreground. Now it's not going to work unless I'm painting with normal. So I do need to switch my mode back to normal. Right bracket key to make my brush bigger. And I'll just do a click and one more click and another click. So now I have a very quick silhouette that I created totally in Photoshop. I hope these ideas have helped and I look forward to seeing what you make. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.